Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we're gonna to be doing a video looking at low T3, increase reverse T3, and fatigue. What does this mean? What does this tell you about your thyroid gland and what else should we look for? Stay tuned, we're gonna dive into those issues. Just one sec, please smash the like button, really helps. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications and put your comments down below. I'm answering those comments, so I wanna see what you guys think. All right, so first off, when you run a complete thyroid panel, we're gonna run a couple of markers here. We'll put them on screen. TSH is gonna be the first one. That's actually a brain hormone. We're gonna run T4 free, maybe T4 total with it, right? Free is two to 5% of your hormone is free fraction. So your free gets you the bioavailable bits of it. Then you have your T3 free, same thing. We can do the total as well. So T4 is less active than T3. T3 is about 300% or so more active than T4. So TSH, T4, T3, and then we have antibodies that may be interacting or creating inflammation or impacting the gland's function and ability to synthesize thyroid hormone and also impacting hormone binding. And then we may also look at, I mean, you can get T3 uptake, but usually you can get a window into uptake with um, T3 free. And then we also may look at reverse T3. And that gives us a window to how much of that T3 maybe is deactivated. So when we have T4 to T3, we may see, let's say if here's the reference range, right here, we may see T4 right in the middle of the reference range, and then T3 is right in the middle. I call that parity. We have parity within the reference range of T4 to T3. So let's say, I'll give you actual reference range numbers. Let's say we say T4 free is 1.4, right? The range is one to 1.5 functional medicine wise. So let's say you're right here, and then your T3 is 2.4, right? The bottom end of the range, you know, is the, the functional range is three to four, so you're outside of that functional range, so there's definitely this drop in the lab reference range. You're at the top of the range for T4, and T3, you're at the bottom, so th there's a lack of parity. Now, why is there a lack of parity? Is there issues with converting? Obviously, there is, but is there a nutritional issue? Nutrition can cause problems. Zinc, magnesium, selenium, CoQ10. Is there issues with cortisol, overly high or overly low? Is there issue with insulin resistance? Is there issue with any toxins? Mold, mold is a notorious one for causing a increase in reverse T3 and low free T3. Is there any issues with insulin resistance? If you go onto Google Scholar and type in low T3 and diabetes or insulin resistance and low T3, you may not find, you may find triiodothyronine, that's the technical word for T3, but you're gonna see all kinds of data looking at low T3 in diabetics. Why? Because you have super high levels of insulin that can impact T4 to T3 conversion. So when we look at T4 to T3, we're looking at the big factors, nutrition, we're looking at cortisol, we're looking at insulin, we're looking at the, the nutrients which connects, obviously inflammation can be connected because there could be autoimmune things. Now T4 to T3, there can be other things that can be helpful. HPA access supporting herbs can be helpful, but we're going to look at that reverse T3 is going to be very telling because if T4 is good and T3 is low, is there a conversion issue where it's not, we're not able to synthesize it? Then reverse T3 may look normal. Let's say 12, 13, 14, right? The range for reverse T3 functional is like 10 to 20 on a conventional lab test at, at, at Quest or LabCorp in the US. When we go above 20, that tells me that the body is starting to downregulate T4 from T3 into reverse T3, which fills the metabolic blanks in that magazine, if you will. So imagine you have a magazine to a gun, you put blanks in it. The blanks are filling the spot in the magazine where real bullets would go. You pull the trigger, right? You hear a sound, but no bullet happens. There's no metabolic effect. So the reverse T3 binds and docks in that receptor site that actual T3 would have an impact on. That T3 comes in, that's gonna impact genetic expression, transcription, translation. You're gonna have an increase in metabolic effect due to that reverse T3, I'm sorry, due to that T3 binding. Reverse T3 is now there. That genetic expression of that thyroid hormone is now less. And so you have this drop in metabolism. So when we look at reverse T3, it tells us a lot about what's happening metabolically. Now you gotta go upstream. So we're running a full thyroid test, TSH, T4, T3. And if we have that T4 to T3 conversion issue, T4 is good, 1.4. T3 free is, let's say, low in the mid to upper twos, right? We can then go, okay, where's reverse T3 at? If there's high levels of reverse T3, let's say above 20, now we're thinking, is there adrenal issues? It, there could still be other issues regarding insulin. There could still be other issues regarding the nutrients. There could still be other problems regarding um, blood sugar and maybe inflammation. So if we see that reverse T3, this is where I really would like to look at cortisol and adrenal function. And so the adrenals play a big role. So that's why I always like to look at when we have a thyroid person, patient, 
thyroid um, kind of pattern, so to speak, that T4 to T3 imbalance, I always want to look at that cortisol rhythm side by side. Do we have very low cortisol rhythm throughout the day? Do we have this imbalance where it's, if here's the day, right, should be higher in the morning and lower at night like this? Is it more reversed? Is it more flat? Is it come up really high and then drop all of a sudden? What does that pattern look like? What does the overall free and total cortisol look like as well? Do we have a common low thyroid um, pattern we're going to see is high uh, free cortisol, low total cortisol. Part of the reason why low total, we're not making a lot of cortisol, but because our metabolism is so low, we're also not metabolizing our free cortisol. So we have a high level of free, a, a low level of um, total cortisol. It's a common thyroid type of pattern that we'll see on adrenal tests. So it's good to look at these things side by side to really get an assessment. Also, if you're a female, low iron could also be a driving factor because we, we those those enzymes that help bind T4 together, there's a lot of iron that's involved in that enzymatic expression in that binding effect. So really important there. Also, iodine can play a role. I mean, iodine, you need a couple hundred micrograms. Obviously, you could do a little bit more, but if there's autoimmunity in the background, too much iodine can drive more inflammation. But if your diet's super deficient, a lot of processed food, you don't get iodine, there also could be that. So as long as we're getting a couple hundred micrograms, we're eating some real whole foods that actually have iodine in it, eggs, meats, some fish, you're usually pretty good. I mean, you can always do an iodine loading test and see, but I usually get more concerned about iodine being too high and not enough selenium, and then antibodies coming up and then overly attacking and inflaming that thyroid. When that thyroid gland's inflamed, we're not gonna be able to synthesize as much hormone. Also, we'll have uncontrolled amounts of hormone coming out because the thyroid's getting jabbed and stabbed and it's being released and the levels go up and then you can feel palpitations and feel hyper, even though you're actually going more hypo over time. And then also um, we talked about um, talked about the the antibody. Oh, also it affects the how the thyroid hormone binds and docks receptor sites. If it's chronically inflamed, the hormones are not going to be able to communicate well because inflammation is kind of a big cellular disruptor. So really important to keep that in mind as well. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Again, when it comes to thyroid issues, fatigue, mood, constipation, hair loss, eyebrow thinning, cold hands, cold feet, you may have good levels of TSH. You may have good levels of TF T4. Remember, T4 feeds back the TSH. So your TSH could be in that in that mid to low ones, maybe even low twos, because your T4 looks good. It looks pretty. So it feeds back to the pituitary and says, look, we're okay. So that TSH stays stable, but that T4 to T3 could drop, or that T3 could drop in the, the reverse T3, docks the receptor sites, fills up that gap and decreases your thyroid hormones genetic expression. So you could have that as well. And these are the people that will come back. Maybe they go to their endo, TSH is fine, they get a thumbs up. Maybe their endo even runs T4, that's fine too. And these are the patients that will fall in between the crack. So this is where we wanna look at your T3 free and total maybe, look at reverse T3, and definitely look at antibodies because that inflammation could be having a really big impact on, on the hormone synthesis and on the hormone's ability to dock and bind at the receptor site level. But you gotta look at other factors. Gotta look at insulin, gotta look at nutrients, gotta look at gut plays a big role because that's where you absorb. That's where 80% of the immune system's located. Gotta look at cortisol and the adrenal. So my patients were looking at the gut. That's 80% of the home of the immune system. Most thyroid issues are autoimmune. So it makes sense if we have autoimmune here and we have inflammation and the immune system living here, so we have to connect the two. We're gonna look at the, that cortisol pattern and really understand where that reverse T3 pattern, if it's there, if we have a low T4 and T3, do we have elevated reverse T3? We're gonna look at that and really get a gleam, gleam a good understanding of what the root cause is. So if you wanna dive in deeper, I see functional medicine patients all throughout the world, you wanna dive in deeper, my staff will be able to help you out. There'll be a link down below where you can click and we'll be happy to help you. All right, guys, have an awesome day. Take care, bye y'all.